white riding a bicycle. <laughs> hey, listen, while you're at it, uh, how about whipping over to the grocery store, get me a quart of milk? <laughs> Sorry, Dad, you'll have to get it yourself. I'm not going that way. Do you realize you have any idea how pathetic you look on that funny bike? Listen, somebody, they really screwed you because there are no fenders. <laughs> here, look here, there should be a fender in the back, should be a heavy light. You need a light in front, bigger reflector in back, and you should have a collection of recent baseball cards right here in the spoke area, so when you go by Mrs. Emerson's, <laughs> it'll bring her out on the porch, okay? Dan, Dan, you've, you've already been talking for a half mile here. Okay. I'll go over to the store by myself on my stationary skateboard. <laughs> I, I'll race you. My feet are stuck. I should never have brought that bee honey in here. <laughs> Horseback? They were in Jeeps. Why do you kid the little boy? You tease him. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Morning, Dad. Morning, Dad. Morning. Good morning, Rob. Did you say good morning. Good morning, Grandpa. Oh, <laughs> that's very quick, Rob. Very quick. <laughs> do you hear a man talking? <sighs> hey, I know that guy. That's uh Clell, the annoying man. Yeah, Clell, the annoying man. Yeah, he looks a little bit like Rob. <laughs> you know, Rob, it's been four days since you've spoken to me, and I'm starting to like it. You know, when I was in the Corps, we had ways and means of making a man talk. Yeah, whether he was on our side or not, didn't make any difference. Just took some bob wires, some old clothesline, wrapped it around him, real tight, some rubber bands, and towed him maybe, oh, 160 miles. <laughs> we got our answers. <laughs> okay. You can tell my father I refuse to speak to him because by his becoming principal, I'm now a marked man. My friends are so nice to me, I can't stand it. And all the losers and wasteoids and ax murderers eat with me at lunch. As far as I'm concerned, Dad doesn't exist. I got you. I think what the boy is trying to say, uh, Dwight, <laughs> remember that uh, money that you were going to spend on that video game for him? Well, he wants me to have that money, and <laughs> in lieu of the toy, a big satellite dish in the backyard, maybe? Uh, huh? Yeah. Pick up on those wonderful late shows from France. <laughs> Boy, something smells good. Mmm. Oh, gosh, waffles. Oh, I wish I existed so I could taste some. Mmm. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Were, were these yours? <laughs> you should have said something. <laughs> Right there. 
there and don't move a muscle. Don't even breathe unless you have to. Where's Yamagami? Right there. Miss Higgins, you brought more kids. What's going on? They were late, Elaine. They were late and they were giggling and they were talking. <laughs> I know. I hate when she gets like this. Mr. Davis, you better talk to Miss Higgins. She's sending kids down here every 30 seconds. Yeah, well, isn't the assistant principal supposed to talk to her? I can't. Why? It's a woman thing. Yeah, what kind of woman thing? I can't stand her. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to her. <clears throat> What's that? <laughs> Just a little something to inspire the troops. Probably with a better stereo. <laughs> Good morning, boys and girls, faculty and staff. That's a little ditty from Wilhelm Richard Wagner and his trio. Well, uh, why don't you and the boys take a little break? <laughs> you know, um, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? Music in the morning. You know why it's fun? Because it's a surprise. And everybody, I think, likes, likes surprises. Uh, Stamp your feet, everyone who likes surprises. Come on, stamp your feet. <laughs> That's what I thought. See, everybody likes surprises. Now, how did I know that? Well, because uh, I'm not only a principal or a teacher, but I'm also a dad. I have, um, I have three kids who go to this school. There's um, Ben and Charlie. And Robbie. How's it going, Rob? <laughs> you know, I like surprises myself, because when I'm surprised, I'm interested. And when I'm interested, I usually learn something. And everything I learn is like a nice little surprise. You know, learning can be fun in school. School can be fun if we just decide to make it fun. And if we do, we're gonna have a lot of fun, we're gonna be surprised, we're gonna learn things, you're gonna get your education, I'm gonna get paid, we're gonna have the summers off, this is a great job, let's do it, let's go for it, let's have some fun! <laughs> Yamagami snitched, didn't she? She doesn't like me, what did she say? Carol, you have 14 of your kids in the front office, now what is going on here? Come on. You played Wagner. You can't do that to kids. It, it gets them all, it, it, it makes them... Ever see a movie called The Swarm? <laughs> You're not in this alone, you know. After every bell, I am forced to shout over laughter, giggling, no passing. I get the class in their seats, and then I confiscate two mirrors, four hairbrushes, and the occasional weapon. Now, wait a minute. You mean that some of these kids are carrying hairbrushes? I want their names, and I want them now. <laughs> <laughs> it's hell in there. We're raising their children. We're not even getting child support. Let it out. Come on now. Come on. No. I'm fine. I always cry. I'm a crier. Any emotion makes me cry. I, I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. I cry when I'm angry. I, I cry at real estate ads on TV. <laughs> Seeing those families in front of their new homes, so hopeful. Carolyn, <laughs> you've got to bring out the heavy artillery. You know, call in some parents. Oh, come on, Dwight. Parents don't want to be bothered. No, then bother them. I mean, this is the best way to get back at these kids. And it works, too. There's nothing more terrifying than a good parent, believe me. You want to waste time talking to parents? Fine, you, you talk to parents. I 
have a class to teach. <laughs> All right, where's my desk? <laughs> Come in. Hey, how's it going, guys? Robbie asked me to read you this. It's my statement. I thought you made your statement this morning. I've taken a harder line. Well, in that case, uh, lay down, me, Rigo. In order for me, Robbie Davis, to continue my job as your son, certain things have to change. Mm -hmm. Mr. Davis, you're not going to be mad at me for this, are you? No, of course not. You go ahead. By becoming principal, you have stripped me of my identity. Please, as your own flesh and blood. Blood. Flesh and blood. I beg you to give up this ridiculous position and go back to being a teacher. Otherwise, I will be forced to assume a new identity. Should that happen, my new name will be Xanth Meyer. Can I see that? Rigo, you want to give us a minute? Sure. What's the matter with you? You mean aside from the fact that I have zits, braces, my voice is breaking, I'm the tallest kid in school, and my dad is everywhere I go? I see you at home, I see you at school, I hear you at school. Well, Rob, you know, I live at home, I work at school. I mean, where would you like me not to be? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't play that way. Now, you know the rules. You can come in here and talk about any problem as long as you're willing to talk about a solution. Now, I don't hear any solution. I don't hear one from you either. Well, it's not my problem, see? I like being around you. Come on, Rob. You want me to walk you to class? Yeah, sure, Dad. Some today. <laughs> Hi, Etta. You wear those v neck t shirts underneath, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, I like to sleep in a t shirt. Nothing more, nothing less. Just 100%. Cotton. And that's it. That's quite an image. <laughs> hey, Dwight, what's with Robbie? I couldn't get him to blow a single note this morning. Oh, he hates me now that I'm the new principal. We all hate you now that you're the new principal. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have to live with you guys. Did you talk to Miss Higgins yet? Yeah, I talked to her. What did you tell her? Well, she was having a bad day, but I, I told her that we need to get parents involved. You know? Parents? Yeah, I want parents. I thought you had parents. <laughs> I do, Earl, but I want other people's parents. That's greedy, Dwight. <laughs> Dwight? Dwight Davis. Dad? This is your father. <laughs> get down here. <laughs> Keep this cold for me, will you? <laughs> Is this really the principal's chair? You better believe it. That's Dwight's own chair. My son's chair. Uh, you want to put your feet up on the desk? I mean, kind of relax. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> uh, incidentally, um, I want to tell you something about little pieces of history. There are a lot of stuff in here. Well, these are fake, but uh, <laughs> this, um, this is a skull. Not, I mean, these, both these guys have skulls. <laughs> anyway, no, this is a skull that they're in. And uh, I'd gone to Yale just before I went into the Marines. And uh, just for about an hour or two. And because um, I wanted the credit, you know, from the Ivy League. And so this is uh, Biff Eddington. And he was in the back. We were in this skull. Uh, just as we were to finish, uh, a bolt of lightning hit Biff. Aww. <laughs> and... Uh, but he fell forward, and that's how I beat Cornell. Uh, that was me, and I was really rowing. He was, you know, when after he'd been struck by lightning, you're not much good to anybody. And, uh, <laughs> and Anita, that's, that's me. Dad, what is this? What are you doing here? Oh, these are the Hilliards. This is Mrs. Hilliard, Mr. Hilliard. Uh, they were uh, downtown at the uh, Information Bureau, where, 
where I am. I hang out most of the time. And they said, uh, we'd like to come up here and uh, see the, uh, the office here, the principal and everything. And Are you actually the principal? Yes. Oh, he's so My good son, looking. My son, isn't he? Isn't he? Takes after his mother. She was a wonderful woman. She's quite tall. A little bit taller than, than he is, really. Fell against a tree and killed a tree. <laughs> nah, as much. Excuse me. Could I talk to you for a moment, Dad? Surely. Look, I, I know that you, you brought these people down here because you're, you're proud that I'm principal and, and you wanted to show off the office. But, Dad, I mean, this is my office. This is where I work. You just can't bring tourists down here to the school. You know, now, come on. How'd you like to be stuck down at the Visitors Bureau all day long? That's no fun. I mean, I get people now and then, but they pressed me a little bit to come up here and see this seat of education and meet you and I know, I know you're proud of me being principal and everything you know you know i'm proud oh, of you 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 great big papa bear you <laughs> <clears throat> you're bigger <laughs> got that from your mom uh, what a uh, giant she was uh, <laughs> okay yeah. now uh, folks back to maine let's do it Okay. You met Dwight. Wasn't that a thrill? Oh, I see. Yes. You bet, you bet. Have a nice trip. They loved you. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I ask you to come in today is that I really do feel that parents can make a difference. And uh, your daughter's problem has unfortunately accelerated to the point that I thought it necessary to have your input. I can't believe you called my mother. <laughs> Carol, uh, my father came by to see me today, and I feel great. And I just thought maybe a little support from your mom would help you. Carol, what have you done to your hair, honey? It looks stringy. Look, Carol, you're a terrific teacher. You know, I need terrific teachers. I need you here. Look, uh, I'm just fried, okay? Why don't you come back and live with your father and me for a little while, dear? No, Mother, it's the job. It's impossible. The pay stinks. The pressure's incredible. There's no respect. The classrooms are crowded. There's no equipment. There's no time. Why do we do it? Because we're stupid. <laughs> no, dear, you've always wanted to be a teacher ever since you were in the sixth grade. Carol, don't give up on this. You know, I remember the moment that I wanted to be a teacher. And it was when I was a student teacher. And I was explaining fractions to this kid, and I knew he wasn't getting it. But I just kept after him and kept after him until finally I, I, I saw this look come across his face. And I knew that he, he got it. You know, I know that sounds silly, but you know, just this flash across this smudgy little kid's face, and I was hooked. <laughs> I know that look. That's why I became a teacher. You don't want to give that up, Carol. You're right, Dwight. I want to teach. I want to teach. They get rescued? Who cares? It's the worst ending I've ever seen. I went from Guadalcanal all the way up to Okinawa. I never saw people like that on an island. Come on, Charlie, get up. Time to go to bed. Come on. Good night. Oh, come on. Robbie, stick around. Have a seat here. You know, I've, um, I've been doing a lot of thinking about what you, you said today, or what you had Rigo say today. And, uh, you know, I know what it is to, to be embarrassed by your father, and I also know what it is to, to be loved by your father. And sometimes both of those things, they, they go hand in hand. You know, that, that's the order of things. Uh, Gunny embarrasses me, I embarrass you, and when you have kids, You'll embarrass them. I mean, 
Here's the score, Rob. You're the kid, I'm the adult, all right? I win. There's no contest. <laughs> and you're not gonna tell me what to do, and you're not gonna threaten me, and you're not gonna disown me, and you're not gonna change your name to Zanf. <laughs> you're my son, and I love you. You hear Take this upstairs and put him to bed, will you? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> hey, Dad, come out here. We're, we're picking up one of those shows from France. I was fast asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I always sleep with my clothes on. <laughs> yeah, when you've been in a war, uh, come I, on. It was just an excerpt. You brought me down two flights for that? I thought it was a show, it's just that's, commercial. That's not funny. I want to tell you something, Dwight. You know, I was listening, okay, to you and, and Robbie, and I, I got to live with you. There's just too damn much love in this family. <laughs> Tell you this, supposed to let up this time tomorrow, though. I, I think about noon it'll clear off. Hey, you wanna you wanna play golf in the morning if the weather clears? Get out there before the sun comes up? Not really. <laughs> no, I'd rather go fishing. Why don't you go fishing with me? Nah, fishing's a bunch of waiting. So's golf. You gotta wait on a twosome, you gotta wait on a threesome. Wherever the ball hits, you gotta wait and then till the other guy plays, and you gotta play yeah, his. You gotta wait on the fist to bite. You know? Sure, you gotta have a little patience, man. They just don't. Floating and waiting, waiting and floating. <laughs> well, I like fishing, and I like fishing better than I do golf, I'll tell you that right now. You know, that, I don't think I really wanna do anything with you tomorrow. I don't wanna do anything with you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we had this talk. I'm not only glad we had this talk, I hope it rains really hard. <laughs> 